It has now been 8 years since Sly Cooper Thieves in Time has been released. That's crazy. That's also why I waited months after my Honor Among Thieves review, just so it could have some celebratory meaning behind it. It's been 8 years since it came out, as well with me waiting 8 years to get the game to begin with. These were some of my very first videos that I've done on my channel. They're of course very basic with being done in Windows Movie Maker. Pretty awesome, right? I was having fun and that's all that matters. Nearly a decade prior, just the idea of another Sly Cooper game was something I thought could only be achieved in dreams. Oh, then making a fourth Sly Cooper game? Pfft, yeah, alright. The series is done. It's not possible. And then the Sly Collection came out on the PS3. And a year later, people found out that 100%ing each game, or in this case, 300%ing, would reveal a teaser to Sly 4? What? And it was finally happening. It would no longer be a dream or endless rumor. It would become real. So, finally getting to play the sequel to my all-time favorite video game is a pretty big fucking deal. And no doubt, once it hit market shelves on day one, bought the game immediately, and it only took me a week to beat the game. And these were on school nights, so of course I am a pro gamer. And as I finished it, I was... fine with the game. That's the best way to put it. But as the weeks rolled by, I started to question some things. As those weeks turned into months, I saw other people question even more. And as those months transformed into years, and by now almost a decade of completely having my opinion and thoughts on Thieves and Time be radically different. With all that time going by, my thoughts on Thieves and Time is that it's one of the worst games I've played. I will explain my reasons as of why, but for now, let's just get into the review of Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Thanks landing, Murray. Hey Bentley, not to complain, but we're kind of trapped here. Relax, Sly. Just put the dagger in the receptacle. Perfect. Isotopic decay calibrated. Adjusting fusion synthesis. Anytime you want to punch it, Murray. You got it, chum! Do not slow down, Murray! I never do! Whoa! I know, shocker, right? Disliking games isn't anything distinct or new. It honestly takes a lot for me to downright say I do not like this game, as in I didn't really have fun, which is crazy because I play video games for fun. Get the fuck out of my room and play Minecraft! At least that's the way I do it. That or to avoid responsibilities. So what's wrong with it, you may ask? It's not really a matter of what, but where. As in where do I even begin? That's honestly the hardest part of this review. I don't know where to start on ripping this game apart. I think I can at least start with the pros, try and get some positivity into this. The idea of Thieves in Time is something I'm glad that got Ninja Spire jumped on, because Sucker Punch really did just close the Thief book on the Cooper gang and moved on. So the fact that Senzaru took the chance to make a continuation of the series is something I'm grateful for, because if they didn't, no one else probably would, and in an alternate timeline, Sly fans are violently typing away on their keyboard asking for a fourth game. Now the only difference in this timeline is that we're asking for a fifth game, and the idea that they went for was something that was a complete must for this series, getting to know more about the Cooper ancestors, and that's what the plot revolves around this time. It's been a brick since the Cooper gang has been together since the third game, but due to pages of the Thingus Rakamagukas or Thievius Raccoonus literally disappearing, this is something that only a little bit of time travel can solve, just like how it was teased from the previous game. Sly, Bentley, and Murray go back in time and stop the mastermind who's behind all this, as well as restoring the pages of the family book. And the best part from this, not only do we get to personally meet, but we also get to play as the Cooper ancestors. They're important figures and characters within the franchise that shape the entire story pretty much. It would be kick-ass if we could play as them. Well, that's what this game's for. 
Not only are Sly and friends back, but we finally get to jump through the shadows of feudal Japan as Ryuichi, or slide along the railroads as Tennessee Kid Cooper. It's a perfect idea. Nothing else would be better. As well with the hub worlds being bigger, brighter, and more detailed than ever, the radiant sun shining right into your eyes, the OST fitting each environment, simple, calm, stealthy music added at the right moment, but then it gets loud and lets you know that shit's getting real. And there's now treasures you can pick up and not sell. You can just keep them. A trophy wall, essentially. That's something I personally did in the second game. I held on to the high priced loot items that were scattered across the hub worlds just so I could build a collection of some sort. Now that's built into the game. I like that. Awkward segue, but the cutscenes have a bit more flow to them. Instead of having the comic book approach in terms of cutscenes, they now have a full-on animated cartoon style. And it works, especially seeing that to promote the game, they had a one-off episode in that style. The first two episodes of the game are rather fun, and with replaying it not too long ago, they still hold up. And that's where the positives end, pretty much. How long was that? Uh, six minutes? That's not too bad. Everything else, though? I more or less have nothing nice to say about. The game in the first two episodes, I'm turning Japanese and Go West, Young Raccoon, are pretty okay episodes. Good, really. Things are only getting started, so there's not too much to complain about overall. Levels look nice, got to play fan favorites and more noteworthy Coopers of Ryuichi and Tennessee, and gameplay is all around fine for the most part. But then, I can pinpoint the exact moment where the game goes from good, to questionable, to bad, to overall bad, in that order. And it all starts with episode 3. Clan of the Cave Raccoon. The Cooper Gang and Carmelita all wind up in an unknown, snowy area. With further investigation, there seems to be a big, hairy raccoon. A prehistoric raccoon. And you guessed it, and because no one literally asked for it, we get... Ugh, Bob... Cooper. Who the fuck is this? Why in the belligerent fuck would Senzaru add someone like him? They <laughs> they literally have an entire book that they could have pulled characters from, but they said, um, no, let, let's not do that. Let's just make up one that no one asked for or cares about. I genuinely cannot fathom the idea of how a decision for a character like that was made. Correction, he's not even really a character. He's basically a plot device for Murray to feel bad because he can't climb a sheer ice wall. What? Murray would not think that way, and that's what made his character great in the second and third game. Murray absolutely know that he really couldn't be as agile as Sly or as smart as Bentley. But one thing he's not is weak. He knew his strengths and limits. The same goes for Sly and Bentley. So why does he want to climb an ice wall all of a sudden? That's not his thing. That doesn't make any sense for who he is. 
Not like it matters, because they changed who he was. They basically dumbed him down to be a fat guy who just likes eating. I honestly couldn't care what happens within this episode, because it's treated as a detour with a HUGE ass amount of luck that they just happened to stumble upon Grizz, who was tampering with the timeline. Everything from the start of this episode stopped making sense for the game overall. Including this episode, and then two more to go, there's so many problems. I'm gonna have to speed run through my rant of a review here, because if I were to dissect every little thing, we would be here for an hour or so. Let's just run by the major problems that there were within the game that don't make any fucking sense. Well, this just doesn't make any sense! Why are the characters either so out of character, or just plain annoying? I've already brought up Murray of how he's reduced to big guy like food. Most of the cast was not done any justice. Carmelita is bitchy in this game, and I don't like saying that, I really don't. But that's how she comes across for most of the game, because she's purposely being stubborn. Sly now comes off as a wisecracking Saturday morning douchebag. Yeah, sure, he had his charm and snarky attitude in the prior installments, but not to this level. Nearly everything he says has some joke or punchline to it, and it gets worse the longer the game goes on. At least in the trilogy, he knew when to buckle down and take shit seriously, and when it was called for. What's the fucking point of Dimitri if they're not gonna use him when he's at his best, which is when he's interacting or talking with people, and he doesn't do any of that? Question mark in bold. Why? And quite honestly, the ancestors could have used a bit more depth to them as well. They're a little too one note. Ryuichi is fine, I guess, but all he just likes doing is subtly bragging that he's a ninja. That's it. Bob? Fuck this character. Sir Galath is okay, he's a lot more dramatic than what I thought they were gonna make him out to be, but he's entertaining to say the least. And Salim Al Kupar is a crotchety old bastard, that's all. Tennessee is really the only one that's not annoying by any means, and is also great on all fronts. Story, character, gameplay. Side note, I don't understand why Sly is a bit of a jerk to a few of the ancestors, you know, the people that he absolutely looked up to and has high respect for, and for the Cooper name in general, yet he says wicked shit like this. Carmelita, what are you doing? Relax, Ringtail. Just keeping tabs on the Dragon Slayer. I don't recall you watching my back on any jobs. Only when I'm trying to catch you. But I find Galath charming. He has a good heart. Even if he is a headstrong goof. Then you better get going before Sir Goof gets himself captured again. The villains in this game are boring for the most part. El Jefe is not too bad actually. He's pretty cool. His boss fight is really dope honestly and peak gameplay for bosses in this game. Toothpick is nothing really worthwhile to talk about. The Grizz is just all over the place. He's a great value version of Dimitri. He's an artist and rapper of some sort, but all he really wanted to do was be an ice skater? What? Ms. Decibel is okay, like El Jefe. Good boss fight as well. And if you probably know, yes I know, I skipped over to the fourth villain of this game, who is revealed to be Penelope. I don't... The fact that I'm at a loss for words in a script that's over 10,000 words should speak volumes in and it of itself. If there was just one word that describes this whole, dumb, pointless, nonsensical, betray the gang for money, pretty much, out of nowhere, and character plot twist, would be no. Just no. And then finally, the insane mastermind behind all of this, going back to erase the Cooper name, was Le Paradox, who is stupid beyond hell and back, and the game straight up points out how dumb he was with this plan. Even as downgraded as Sly was in this game, even he knew how stupid Le Paradox was with this plan. So, before we finish this, let me get one thing straight. You came after the Coopers because of what happened to your father? No, you imbecile! I came after the Coopers to prove that Le Paradox is the greatest thief who has ever lived. Is there any doubt? Ask yourself this. If the Coopers were truly the greatest thieves in history, and I have stolen their most valued possessions, 
Then what does that make me? Um, an idiot? You had it made! You could have been the biggest thief of all time, but you had to target my ancestors and blow your own cover. You exposed your operation because of your ego. No Cooper would have done that. And for the record, can you really say you stole the canes? Seems like your friends did all the real work. Bentley is really the only other person who's not too diminished and is pretty consistent with who he is. The game tries to make it seem like he went through this character arc. Not really. He just gets into a literal fight with his girlfriend and that's it and he moves on. Nothing really before or after either. The characters do not drive this story at all and for the story itself with time travel being the main focus it relies a lot on luck. It's ridiculous and very hard to believe for most of the game. It's just the first game story pretty much but with just extra stupid steps. Now don't worry. I know I'm spending a copious amount of time explaining things about the story and not necessarily the gameplay itself. But that's the thing with the Sly Cooper series. Why I myself and a lot of people enjoy the series is because of the surprising level of depth it has with its story when at first glance all this series is about is a cartoon raccoon with a gold stick. The story within the games is what makes Sly Cooper so fascinating to me. It's like the Persona games. Go with me on this. Yes, it's fun beating the shit out of shadows, demons, and god from time to time. But what's the one thing that pushes the gameplay for them? The characters, the social links, the themes of the games, everything that makes a worthy plot, and then all the extra bits of music and social simulator aspect. That's the main drive of that series. It's the story. And the same thing goes for Sly Cooper. Because of how profound the series is with its narrative, its story alone takes the gameplay and pushes it up and makes everything you're doing better. Yes, in the first game, all you're really doing is just jumping left and right and hitting anything that moves with a stick. But why are you doing it? It's because Sly is more or less on a revenge quest to get his family book back together because they were killed. He's not only getting justice for his family name alone, but for others who suffered from the Fiendish Five as well. That's just from the first game, where the story isn't too much of a focus, honestly. That's where the second and third game come in with all of that, where there's twice, if not three times as much than before. That's what pushes the gameplay overall when I'm jumping around and pressing the circle button everywhere. But because Thieves in Time does not have the same atmosphere, its story is now brought down to here, which results in the gameplay also just being mediocre at best. Everything that I've been saying has also affected the gameplay. The story doesn't give you the presence of a thief or anti-hero, but someone who just happens to be a thief and that's it. Most of the game doesn't give you that idea and that's a shame. I'm not at the edge of my seat, at the final boss ready to bring La Paradox down for what he's done, because the game certainly doesn't care, it's a damn quick time event. I slightly get annoyed that there's so many hacking sections as a replacement for most of Bentley's real gameplay. Fighting as Murray is clunky as shit, the ancestors were told to play differently from Sly, yet they're pretty much the exact same, as well as having some moves they shouldn't due to how a goddamn timeline works. Most of the collectibles are stupid and a waste of time, the story is fucking atrocious, and the loading screens are so damn long! I get discouraged sometimes, but I'll never give up. Because I know Sly's out there, and I know that wherever he is, we will find him. I think I've pretty much covered everything that bugs me about Thieves in Time. 
like, look, yeah, how it controls, how it handles is passable. Not gonna lie, it feels a little more stiff than before with platforming, with fighting especially, and with stealth. Now, of course, don't let my insane babbling ruin your experience or enjoy the game. If you still like it after everything I've said, then bro, more power to you. That's incredible, go have fun. As for me, unfortunately, I cannot enjoy this game for what it is. The gameplay does not fully match the mixture of stealth and platforming, 90% of the story is a headache and a mess, and it really, really fucking sucks that this game's 100% ending is one of the worst cliffhangers I have seen in a video game. Because how long has it been? Right, almost a decade, and Sly is still stuck in Egypt. Because fuck you, I guess. And there's no word for a fifth game at all to resolve anything. Oh boy. That's it. I I I'm done. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time is not a good game. Not by my standards. It's not the absolute worst game I've played, because i played through all of it a few times from start to finish. There's only really a few games that I've hated so much that I don't even bother to finish them. So Thieves in Time at least has that. But other than all that, I don't really enjoy this game and it would never really be a game that I would truly sit down to have fun with. I just can't do it. Unless someone paid me to do so, I'm never picking up that game ever again to play it. And that's just how it is. I may personally not like this game, but you can probably like it. You know, again, more power to you. That's fun and everything. That's to the average person, though, who doesn't probably know anything about the trilogy and just pick this up on a whim. So they're like, it's it's okay, it's fine. But as someone who's grown up with the entire trilogy from start to finish and played them nearly religiously, yeah, no, this game is uh, not fun by any means. But yeah, I'm just rambling and that's it when it comes to these in time review. It's, it's almost like Kingdom Hearts 3. I wonder, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, is that how Kingdom Hearts fans feel? When the third game came out, because that's all I've heard, it's just that it's not fun and just really mediocre at best. Oh well, whatever. Let me know in the comments below of how you guys feel. I'll try and do more slide videos, that's what I actually want to try and do for the next couple. But uh, yeah, you know what to do with all the links that I provide and everything of the sort. Thank you for watching, that's greatly appreciated of course. Have a great day, have a great night, and everything else, you know what to do. Bye.